Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we are so delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. Today, we're taking questions from you, our viewers. So if you're watching during this live broadcast, it's Monday. Give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. Well, the question for today's show is, how has the witness of great pro-life people leaders inspired you? Yes. And we got some wonderful responses from people, and that was lovely. And um, we had some great people that influenced our lives. Absolutely. I think right? back when I was in seminary, Episcopal seminary at the time, and uh, we were having this discussion about pro-life and so on, and it was a small group discussion. And uh, at that point, I was pro-life, but with exceptions. And I didn't even really think that through, but I thought certainly there has to be exceptions for if a woman is suicidal or if severe abnormalities, then in that case, you could have abortion. And one of the guys in the group, Jeff Chapman, was mm -hmm. his name, mm -hmm. he wound up being a wonderful priest in the Anglican Church. Uh, you know, he, he just said to me, you know, Jim, the woman and these babies are of equal worth and value mm -hmm. and dignity. They're both human lives, and there's really no reason why or any real benefit for somebody who's been raped or there's incest or there's whatever. There's no medicinal or helpful thing that she would go ahead and do that, or if she's suicidal, this would help her. Plus, they're equal. You, you can't under any condition. Mm -hmm. he, he shared strongly, beautifully, and it was the first time I ever heard it, and I just immediately I said, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that day, I became... Under no circumstances can you abort a child. So Jeff Chapman was somebody, he's not renowned, but he was very influential in my life. Right, and I think for me it was Keith and Melody Green. Um, you know, they put out some information, very evangelical people, but they were promoters of life. Oh, yeah. And a pamphlet came to our home. Um, Children, things people throw away. Yeah, yeah, and it was a great track, and it changed my life. And my son challenged me. And, um, and then you think of the great people, like... A Joe Scheidler, like Father Frank Pavone, right. like Alveda King. St. John Paul II. Right, yeah. who's teaching that we have sat under and they have groomed us. But I'm going to tell you the real witness for life that affected my life were the pro-life people, Protestant and Catholic, who showed up every single day at seven of our abortion clinics. You see, because I came out to find where the abortion clinics were because I didn't know where they were. And it was those faithful mm unrelenting people that just witnessed. They didn't say much, but they yeah. showed up. Yeah. And, yeah. And, that, and it converted me. I was like, I need to be like that. I need to have that kind of zeal. I need to have that yeah. kind of passion for life. And I need to make that sacrifice and get involved. So you might want to give us a call, send us an email. Who are the pro-life leaders or how are pro-life leaders inspired you uh, to be more about the gospel of life? How did that take place? one 800 221 9460, give us a call now. We're going to take a break. Plenty more coming regarding the gospel of life. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, remember that today we're taking questions during our live show. So if you're listening, we want you to give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside North America, please call us at 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Well, the great question for today's show is how has the witness of great pro-life leaders 
inspired you. And today, right now, we have Jeannie Mancini a on the phone. A great pro-life leader. A great pro-life leader who is the president of March for Life. And Jeannie, we want to welcome you to At Home with Jim and Joy. And certainly, we want you to give our family an update on this year's March for Life. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you so much for having me, Jim and Joy. I don't know if you remember, but I think it was my very first year working for the March for Life, and you invited me down to Alabama, and I got to meet with you in person, and it was incredible. Yes, you weren't even married then. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my gosh, so much has changed since then. Um, but I'd be delighted to give you an update on this year's March for Life. Thanks for having me on. Um, Unfortunately, the March for Life will look a little different this year, but we are continuing to carry on the tradition. This is our 48th annual March for Life. So our rally will be, uh, it will be pre-recorded and it will be played at noon. So the rally will go from noon to one this Friday, January 29th, and EWTN will be broadcasting it. I will tell you, it's phenomenal. We have an all-star cast of speakers, and they're really engaging. Um, leading our lineup is the wonderful Tim Tebow, yeah. of course, um, Heisman Trophy winner and um, of NFL and baseball <laughs> fame, yes. uh, just a true sportsman, and he, he shares his testimony of being pro-life. We've also got a lot of evangelical leaders this year, in addition to Catholic leaders. Um, we've got J.D. Greer, who's head of the Southern Baptist. Um, we've got Jim Daly from Focus on the Family. Yeah, great we also have Sissy Graham Lynch, of course, the granddaughter of the great Billy Graham. So we've, we're really standing strong and unified with our evangelical brothers and sisters. Um, we've got Archbishop Nauman, who represents the Catholic Church in our pro-life uh, secretariat at the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops. He'll lead our opening prayer. We have Lila Rose, of course, a convert to Catholicism. Um, I'm the MC. And um, just, again, a really good lineup. We have a student, always our favored speaker, who's from Christendom College in Front Royal, Virginia, who will be speaking as well. Well, it's really interesting, Jeannie. I remember last year uh, watching this great event and uh, the national anthem was sung by a beautiful young woman by the name of Angelica Park. She's going to be with us on Wednesday and Thursday oh. of this week, and we got introduced to her through the March for Life. Awesome. We're featuring Angelica again, too, not singing our national anthem this year, but during our Rose Dinner that night, she is singing this incredible song, and it's got these yes. really powerful images of little ones behind, so she's, she's such a warrior. Yeah, I think that song, if, if it's the song I'm thinking of, it's Listen, Can You Hear Me, perhaps. Mm. And so... Yeah. Um, so we've got the lineup, what EW10 is doing, 1130. Uh, it starts with a, a preview show, Eastern Time, 12 o'clock, March for Life Virtual Reality, 1 p.m. March for Life with a small group of pro-life leaders. Can you tell us yeah. about the actual march with this group of leaders? I would love to tell you. So, uh, of course, we're facing the COVID pandemic. Um, and then in addition to that, any of us who live near D.C. right now know that it's almost like a war zone mm -hmm. in terms of street closures, fencing up, national armed guard, et cetera. I've never seen anything like it. It's almost like going into a developing communist country to go into DC. And so our march will look very different. We've got a small group, 60 pro-life leaders, who will be marching, and EWTN is going to have great coverage of this. Yes. Um, so stay tuned on EWTN on TV, as well as the March for Life website, and you'll watch the march and a few interviews. It will be a somber march. We will be carrying all of the marchers sort of symbolically on our shoulders as we march through D.C. Um, and so I don't want to give too many details yeah. away, except that I think it's going to be a very moving uh, 48th historic March for Life. So be sure to tune in. Well, thank you so much for giving us a great update. And I know our viewing family will be watching and know that all the angels and saints will be walking with you all. And we will be praying for you. Amen. So thank you so much, Jeannie. And thank, thank you for the you. great witness and the great work that you all are doing. Oh, my gosh. Right back at you, Jim and Joy. Thank you. So God bless you now. Keep up your great work. Beautiful life. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you. you. She's fantastic. She's outstanding. And uh, so wonderful. And so what we're speaking today, you can go to marchforlife.org. Uh, 
State marches oh, near state you. state marches near yeah. you. Yeah, mm -hmm. go to marchforlife.org and you, you'll see a tab because that's yeah. a little lengthy. And it will say the state marches. So there's stuff happening all over the state. Right. And, and you can get involved with that. And Joy, we recently, we didn't do our march here in Birmingham, but we did uh, do a, a time a, at, a prayer at Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. A prayer vigil mm -hmm. and witness at Planned Parenthood. And uh, you know, as you mentioned earlier, we had seven abortion mills in Birmingham. We're down to one, and this is the remaining one. We had 500 people mm -hmm. praying, witnessing to the Lord. So Our many bishop young came people, out. and so mm -hmm. there's a lot going on locally. Even if you're not able to go out right. to Washington to do that, go to MarchForLife.org, find out what's going on locally, or just find an abortion mill, go there, pray. Mm -hmm. You can even stay in your car, whatever you need to do, but don't miss the opportunity. And we had ours witness early because the March for Life was still on at that time. It, they hadn't canceled it yet. And then they put it later because of the inauguration. So, and then once, you know, we got, had that date down. So, but, it, but get involved, find out where the local abortion clinics are and show up. Amen. And we want to remember Joe Scheidler, who was yes. a great holy man of God who passed away this week. And we had mm -hmm. Joe and his son Eric on our show. Mm -hmm. And we had his beautiful wife, Anne. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, Joe was one of those men of God that you know yeah. that where he walked, yeah. the demons trembled. That's right. And he stood the yes. test of time. Yes. And I know that all the babies that he tried to save in his long witness of life were welcoming him yes. into heaven. Joe Scheidler, a giant, uh, the grandfather of the pro-life movement, over five decades of, mm -hmm. of service. And I met Joe early on in my days of be becoming a dedicated pro-life leader, becoming an activist. He would lead these workshops with young guys coming up, give them training. He wrote a book, um, I, I don't know the exact numbers, like 98 Ways to End Abortion, mm -hmm. and he'd take you out there to do what you need to be doing. He's responsible for hundreds and hundreds of pro-life leaders, not only yes. his work, and then he was sued under RICO, racketeering, influenced corrupt organizations. For years, he had to go to the Supreme Court, I think, three times, and, and lost so much money. They wanted to take his house, everything else. He stood firm. And uh, what a beautiful marriage, family, children, grandchildren. Eric Scheidler and his wife, Ann, continue Pro-Life mm -hmm. Action uh, League. So go to that website. I think it's prolifeaction.org. And so we thank God for his, his great mm. life. And you want to talk about people who've inspired you. Mm -hmm. He inspired me to, to get up and speak on behalf of life, to, to make visible those who are invisible, to be the voice of the voiceless. I mean, Joe was an activist and he said, we've got to keep this before the people. Yes. And so may he rest in peace. May Anna's wife be blessed and, and that entire family, Joe Scheidler. And you know, I didn't know how to sidewalk council when I first showed up there. Ann Scheidler. And, and Ann Scheidler had this VHS <laughs> video and we got our hands on it and they kind of just taught you how to, how to go out there and, and love these moms yeah. and to throw them a lifeline and say, this isn't your only option. How can we help? Yeah. So. And I, I think they had their attack on that. Uh, and they do great youth ministry as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she was like, you need to know the lawsuits that are against that place. This woman's thinking a lot about herself mm -hmm. and not only about her child. Right. And so you have to say, this is what's happened here. This place is a place of risk. Why don't you come someplace else where they don't have lawsuits against them? Why don't you get a free ultrasound? Why don't right. you get... And she was just saying, a lot of us go right to the child, which of course, that's such an urgent thing. But these women are thinking about themselves. Can Never I be hard here? What's going mm -hmm. Yeah, like baby's kind of secondary. Mm -hmm. So she came up with this way, had a, in a conversational way and loving them to, to bring them away from that place and to save children in that way. And to be a great voice of hope to women yeah. who are in despair and who are feeling hopeless and feel like abortion is their only option. So again, we want to hear from you now. How have pro-life leaders inspired you, influenced you um, to speak up for life, to speak mm -hmm. out for life, to be the voice of the voiceless. Joy? Well, we heard from one viewer and said probably the greatest was Joe Scheidler, <laughs> who we lost last Monday, and Father Frank Pavone, Janet Morana, Jill Stanick, the nurse who brought the light to the abandonment of babies who survived abortions. 
Abby Johnson, the former Planned Parenthood director, and there are so many. Mostly my dad, who was on the forefront of the fight for life as legalization was being debated. He helped form our local pro-life group, and he wrote legislators, went to the Walk for Life, raised money for pro-life groups by organizing uh, a carnation sale every Mother's Day at local churches. And this woman says, I will try to carry on this legacy by doing the same. And I recently trained and was volunteering at a local pregnancy center once a week. My dad is deceased nearly five years. 35. 35 years, but I'm pretty sure he was greeted with well done, my good and faithful mm. servant. Pretty sure Joe Scheidler was too. So that, there's your urgency, and that's from beautiful Margaret on Facebook. You see, you and I, this is, there is no dress rehearsal. This is the show. Amen. This is game day. So you and I get to show up. Nobody's going to run your race for you. You got to run your race. You got to pray. You got to participate. You got to get your skin in the game and do all that you can to defend the culture of we life. We have Pam on the line. She's from Ohio. Pam, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Uh, who is it or how is it that you've been inspired by great pro-life leaders? Go right ahead. I've been inspired by several. Um, I was actually able to even speak once at the March for Life, but the people who initially inspired me the most were a couple of ladies who worked at my local pregnancy center and I had gone in um, to the class for healing. Mm. Um, as a teen, I, my husband and I, he's my husband now, but when we were dating in high school, we became pregnant. And uh, my mother actually forced us to abort what would have been our first child. Yes. And um, that kind of threw me into um, a state of life where I guess I blamed the Lord and I misplaced mm. that blame. But anyhow, yes. when I went to that pregnancy center and I took that Bible study with those two ladies, they really worked with me and brought me back around and brought me back to the Lord. Mm. And I noticed that one of your people had just written in that they're learning to volunteer at a pregnancy center. Yes. Please know, all of you who are out there and who do that, the impact that you have on our mm. lives. And mm. thank you for what you did for me. Pam, thank, thank you, you so much. Um, we pray for you, your family, this little one that you've mentioned. We are so sorry for your loss. Thank you for being so eloquent. And John Paul II said, those who've been the closest in on abortion may have had an abortion. Through the healing grace of God, you will become some of the most eloquent spokespersons on behalf of the gospel of life, and you have demonstrated that so beautifully. Joy? Well, you know, and on a daily basis, we are healing the brokenhearted. We, too, at our Pregnancy Medical Center have women who come to us, and maybe they want to volunteer, and policies are if you've had an abortion in your past, you have to go through post-abortion healing. And, and you might be out there, and you may have participated in an abortion in your past. Maybe you're a man, maybe you're a woman, maybe you were the father, maybe you're a grandmother, grandparent, and you made that poor life choice. Mm -hmm. We want you, right now, you can call a pregnancy medical center right in your area, and they offer post-abortion healing. And if they don't have a place, they will point a yeah. dot. They will yeah. connect a dot for you to get and that What you want healing. to look up is, and I think we might have it and show it to you, it's optionline.org. Yes optionline.org. All you do is put in your zip code. It will list all the uh, pro-life centers in your area. And so this is very important for you to know if you need hope, you need healing, or you're listening to us today and you're thinking about having an abortion, go to optionline.org now. Or you just want to know where the pro-life centers are in your community, especially this month of January. Maybe you were going to go to Washington, you can't go. Go to your local mm -hmm. pregnancy medical center and just say thank you. Or maybe bring them some supplies or maybe write them a check and just say, thank you for the great work that you're doing in saving babies from abortion, helping women in crisis pregnancy, and bringing post-abortion healing to those who need it. It says, as a parent of multiple college students, I'm very grateful for the incredible work of Students for Life in their declaration. We are the pro-life generation, and we will abolish abortion under the leadership of Kristen Hawkins. And they are doing incredible work of equipping our young people yes. in college and high school to live and build a beautiful culture of life. And this Amen. is from Linda, and that is true. And that's what we were saying earlier. There's so many young people being drawn to this movement. They yes. know instinctively. It's written upon their hearts. And, you know, young people are about, it isn't fair. Mm -hmm. It isn't just. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When you, when you show them the preborn child fetal development and you show them different stages of what, what they're, when they're aborted, what they look like, 
they get it right away. Mm -hmm. You've got to be indoctrinated the other way, not, yes. not to get life and the beauty of life. And our young people, if they're shared with about that, especially as they share with one another, they almost immediately embrace it and they want to be a voice of the voiceless and the face of the faceless. We're going to have Angelica Park with us right. to, uh, on Wednesday and Thursday, another great young person, and she's going to give her testimony and her witness. And today, right after we leave here, I'll be meeting with a group of college kids who are going to be coming locally to our Pregnancy Medical Center to hear and see and know exactly what we do. So now is the time for you and me to get more involved. Thanks so much for reaching us. And may you be one of the people that influences somebody else. You may never know it in this life, but that your witness to life may influence others to take up the gospel of life. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, before we wrap up today's show, it seemed to go very, really very fast. fast. Yeah. We're going to go straight to Rome to check in with beautiful Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, what is the latest news from Rome? Well, hi, Jim and Joy, and greetings from a Rome in which we are once again uh, in lockdown, but um, no time today to go into details about that because I have a lot of news I want to share with you. Now, in the first place, um, it was late Saturday afternoon when the Holy See Press Office sent out a statement noting that because of a recurrence of sciatica, you know, the Pope had an issue recently where he had to skip some events, that the Pope on Sunday would not be presiding at the Mass for the Sunday of the Word of God in St. Peter's Basilica, but that would be presided over by Archbishop Reno Fisichella. And the Vatican also announced that the annual traditional meeting with the Diplomatic Corps accredited to the Holy See, which was scheduled um, before today for January 25th, that would have to be postponed. And then the second event scheduled for today, which was Vespers in the Basilica of St. Paul's, that's later this afternoon, Vespers in the Basilica of St. Paul's outside the walls to end the annual week of prayer for Christian unity, that would be presided over not by the Pope, but by Cardinal Kurt Koch. So um, Sunday, however, a few people did see Pope Francis in the Santa Martha residence where he lives as he gave out some Bibles especially created for the occasion. And there were nine guests. There were some catechists. There were some students of the Bible, a seminarian, a soccer player, a doctor, and a blind woman who received a copy of the, of the Bible in Braille. And then we did see the Pope publicly. We did see the Pope, not publicly, but online, as he uh, addressed us at the Angelus. This was live streamed from the Papal Library in the Apostolic Palace. And in post-Angelus remarks, the, the Pope referred to a Nigerian homeless man who was found on January 20th alone, and he had died from the cold, and this just happened meters from St. Peter's Square. So the Holy Father asked everyone to pray. He offered a prayer uh, silently, and all of us at home joined him for that day. The Pope said he, Edwin was abandoned. He was left by all of us as well. So let's pray for him. Uh, and then in other remarks, post Angelus, the Pope noted that that day, Sunday, was um, the feast of St. Francis de Sales. He's the patron of journalists. And the Pope made a reference to his annual message for World Communications Day, which had been released um, on Saturday. And that message is called Come and See, Communicating by Encountering People as They Are. And then he had some words for us, those of us in the media. He said, I exhort all journalists and communicators to go and see even when there are places no one wants to go to and to tell the truth. So food for thought from the Holy Father, but um, time's up. Back to you. Thank you so much, Joan. You know, as Joan was sharing about the Holy Father's sciatica, I mean, it just really brought home the desire to pray for him. We're supposed to pray mm -hmm. for him anyway, but mm -hmm. we don't want him to be in that pain, so right. let's pray for our Holy Father. What a wonderful time today, much more than a show. 
speaking, giving thanks for those who've influenced our lives, that we can come into a greater fullness of the knowledge of the blessedness and the wonder of human life. We declare from the very moment of conception through natural death that every life is precious, that you cannot take human life, but everybody has that fundamental right to life all the days of their lives. And we will declare this message, as John Paul II said, with dauntless fidelity to every generation that human life, especially young children in the womb, will be lifted up as Jesus was in embryo and a fetus and now reigns as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And those of us who have committed some of the most grievous sins, we can be forgiven of our sin and become eloquent spokespersons on behalf of life. Do not be afraid. The gospel of life, marriage, and the family will prevail upon the face of the earth and into eternity. You're an important part of this family. You're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.